So, how does the brain work? That's this Jerry Van Amerton cartoon. So we're going to close out here in a couple of minutes. So hold on, we're just about finished. Let me explain something about the brain. It's a process of connections, connections of experiences. Experiences come into our, our perception. Perception is experience. That's what it is. And as we get a perception, we set up our body to respond to that perception. So basically, it says this. The brain is a device that converts whatever the experiences are into awareness. So light comes into my eyes, but electromagnetic vibrations go out my nerve. Sound comes into my ear, but electromagnetic vibrations come out my nerve to my brain. Touch is physical pressure, but electromagnetic vibrations come up my arm. The point is, the brain converts all of this environment into electromagnetic vibrations, which become our awareness. But the part about the brain is that it records these things, so that as an experience comes in, not only are we seeing the picture at this moment and our live awareness, but we are also recording the ability to remember that experience. Why? And the answer, this is this, is this really critical but interesting part, is why? And the answer is this, because if I take my awareness and play it back through my brain, I repeat the experience again. The bottom line is the brain is a recorder. It's like a slide, it's like a camera that takes a slide. Here's a picture of what I learned, and then awareness is the light bulb that illuminates the slide. So when I take my awareness and play it back through the slide, I recreate the behavior. So as much as people don't want to hear it and somebody says, well, you're just like your mom, or you're just like your dad, and you go back and go, <gasps> no, it can't be. And the reality is, yeah, because your behavior is how you learn from them, and your behavior is a playback of your experiences. But then you say, wait, I have free will, I have a mind. I could think of different things. And the answer is this, this is where the critical part comes out, is, is this. It's based on this picture I'm going to show you, but it's based on this fact first. It is estimated that four billion nerve impulses are coming into your brain every second. While you're sitting right now, four billion nerve impulses are hitting in your brain every second. But you can only handle approximately 2,000 bits of that data in consciousness. What does that mean? Well, it says that most of the information that's coming in is not being, you're not being consciously aware of it. I'll give you an example. Okay, you've been looking at the slides up here. All of a sudden, focus on the shirt on your back. Just focus on a sec. Can you feel it? Go, go ahead, move a little bit. Can you feel that sitting back there? And the point was, were you not feeling your shirt before I asked you to feel it? The answer is, no, you were feeling it all the time. Nerves don't shut off. They're always coming in. But the fact was what? Well, you weren't paying attention to it because it wasn't necessary for you and your consciousness to bring up the fact, hey, you're wearing a shirt, you're wearing a shirt, you're wearing a shirt, you're wearing a shirt. It's like, I know I'm wearing the shirt. You don't have to tell me. So the brain is smart. Things that it knows, it does not bring up to your conscious attention. Why? Because your conscious attention only can handle such a small percent. Let me show you what percent. Imagine there are four billion little tiny pixel dots that make up this landscape. And that this represents all the information coming into your brain right now. How much of this information in the slide actually enters into your consciousness? And the answer is, you see that little dot? If you can, or if you can't see it, that dot is a thousand times larger because I had to be able to show it to you. In other words, where's all this? What's all this stuff? And the stuff is, it's information that's coming into your head right now, but why isn't it in your consciousness? The answer is, because if you've already learned how to do something or respond to the signal, there's no reason it's like, hey, you got a shirt on, you got a shirt on. It's like, I don't need to know that. And the point about it is this then most of our behavior, listen to this, most of our behavior has been from experiential replaying over and over and over again. So the concept is this, most of the behavior that you elicit, you don't think about consciously. I'll give you an example. For those that drive a car, it's a great example. Have you ever gotten in a car and gotten in a discussion with somebody while you were driving and you talked and you talked and you talked and you realized about a half hour later that you've been driving for a half an hour, you haven't paid attention to anything on the road? but you also realize you got here too, so you didn't hit anything either. And the point about it was what? Because driving is a learned experience that you can put it into your programming and do it automatically. Walking is a learned experience. I broke my knee a few years ago, and when I had it reconstructed, I realized I had to relearn how to walk because it took a whole process of how to move the leg and step and all that because when they rebuilt it, it broke up all the old pathways. And the point was, my God, when I walk down the street now, I don't think about moving this, yet it involves a lot of coordination, a lot of learning went into this. And the bottom point is this. Then most of the behavior that you elicit is transparent to you. You don't even see it. 
Why? Because it's so automatic that on the job and whatever you're doing, it just comes out. Somebody pushes a button, you make a response. You're not thinking. You're, you're thinking about, well, I want to go on vacation. I can't wait to go home. I'm looking forward to this. And yet you're doing your job. How can you do that and still have those other thoughts go on in that little tiny dot of consciousness? And the answer is this. Because almost all of our actions are out of our purview. We don't see them. They're repeated automatically. And why does this get to be a problem? It's the difference between walking your talk and not walking your talk. Why? In your head, you, you are a good person. You say to yourself, I'm a, you know, I'm, I try, I'm being good, I, I want to lose weight, I want all these things, why can't I control it? And the answer is, because all that consciousness represents is that little tiny dot. Most of the control, 99.999999% is already pre-programmed from your learned experiences. You can't lose weight just because that little conscious dot says so. You have to recognize you have weight because of whatever learning experiences you had about your life, they were programmed in there. You can get rid of the program, you could get amnesia. So I'll give you an example. Remember the movie regarding Henry with Harrison Ford? Here's a lawyer who gets shot and, and wakes up in the hospital, he's got amnesia. Who am I? What am I? Well, we know what's going on here. So they take him home, and his wife tries to say, this is how we live and all this, and he goes to the job, and all his work people are showing him, and he's a lawyer, you know, and he, start, he starts to look at, review from a distance, his life, because he wanted to fill the picture back in. And as he started to put the picture back in, he all of a sudden he made up his mind, he said, you know, that really stinks, this is a stinking life. And he decided, the hell with the picture, I'm going to make a brand new life. So he got out there and ended up converting his beliefs into all new beliefs and immediately changed his life. And the problem is this, unless you have amnesia, all your beliefs are still locked in there. And the problem about that is, no matter if your consciousness says this is what you want to do, if you don't get to the core belief, you'll find that your thoughts and your actions are not on the same level with each other. And that people, you'll observe people that say, I don't know why people don't like me. I'm such a nice person. Get out of here and don't bother me. I'm talking over here. Can't you see it? I'm really a nice person. I don't get out. And the point why is because they don't even see themselves saying this. Why? It's all pre-programmed. But the consciousness is concerned about the fact that they're not liked. The issue is we have to connect our understanding to our beliefs. It's our beliefs that select our genes, the beliefs that we were programmed with. So the bottom line is that the cell is like a camera. And so how does a camera work? Well, there's an image outside that is projected through the lens, and the lens takes that image and focuses it on the film. What kind of image is made on the film? A complement. The film is always a complement to whatever it sees. It's a positive outside, it's a negative on the inside. So the, the material inside the camera is physically a complement of what it sees outside the camera. Well, the relevance of that is the cell is exactly the same mechanism. The cell perceives the environment, the lens is the membrane, which picks up the signals and then sends the signals into the nucleus. Then the nucleus will adjust the genes, as we saw in Cairns' work, to m adjust the genes to complement the environment. So if that arrow outside the cell is an antigen, a virus, or a bacterium, then the cell will make on the inside antibodies which are locking key complements of that. Well, that's beautiful. That says then that the, the structure of the cell is locked to what the cell perceives. The bottom line is this. Your cells, what is their physiology? And the answer is, what do you see? If you open your eyes, and this is the image that greets you when you open your eyes, then what kind of structure is your cell going to make in response to that? It will complement it. This is a pathological situation. The cells will become pathological. On the other hand, you could change your belief or open your eyes and see something much more beautiful like Maxfield Parrish's ecstasy. And what the cells are going to do now? Are they going to be in growth or protection when they see this picture? Growth. Well, growth is going to allow the maintenance and survival and health of the individual. Okay? But now here's we also learn this. That filters can get between the camera and the reality. And when you put filters in, you change the image by modifying it by the filter. Understandable? So the bottom line is this. Cells have filters. And the filter is what? Belief. Belief gets between the environment and the response of the cell. So the belief is a filter that takes the environment and converts it into something it can understand and then relate that to the cell so the cell can make a complement of it. Now, what I would like you to do is go to your envelope and pick out one of the filter glasses, red or green. 